guys how to create this super cool AI generative fill effect using Photoshop. If I go back here and I push play, we're gonna be creating the super cool zoom in effect. For this to work, the first one is it has to be filmed on a tripod. Your video cannot be moving. If it is, it's not going to work unless you track it individually, which will take absolutely forever. Or uh, second, <laughs> your subject cannot be touching the edge or it can't be too close to the edge because it also will not work. And three, you wanna make sure that there is an actual subject within your video so that the effect actually looks cool. Once you have your clip in Final Cut Pro, you're gonna go over to File at the top, go down to Share, and then Save Current Frame. You're probably not gonna have it if you haven't saved frames before, so just click Add Destination if you don't have it. And then you're gonna go to the bottom at Destination. You're gonna have Save Current Frame. Just click and drag that to the left here to add it to that list. Click on the current frame here and then save the export option to JPEG. I think it'll originally be on TIFF. Just switch that back to JPEG and then scale image to preserve aspect ratio is turned off and then go ahead and close it. And then again, go back to share and then save current frame. And then I'm going to name this posty or something. I'm going to name this posty one. So we're not going to be opening up Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop beta, just go over to the Adobe application. If you don't have the Adobe application, you can just download it by going to adobe.com. This video is not sponsored by them in any way. I just want to show you guys how to use Photoshop with Final Cut Pro. So you're going to go over to the categories, go down to beta apps, and you're going to go over to the Photoshop beta. It'll probably be under here. So just click install. Again, you can use uh, a free trial of Adobe and then you can you know, you get Photoshop beta. You can also use the online version of Photoshop beta. That works too. Don't forget to get my editing packs at kingtouchpro.com, add it to the cart and check out. Then add your email and press download. Import the assets into Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci, or Filmora. And finally, drag and drop into the timeline. And then we're going to go ahead and click on open and we're going to we're going to open up that image that we saved to our desktop click open and then here's our image go ahead and unlock the layer by clicking once on that lock icon if you've never used photoshop before i'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible so that you guys can follow along <laughs> for that reason i'll try and kind of go a little bit slow here so what you're going to do is right now we have the move tool if you click and hold you can actually cycle between different tools underneath here you should have the they call it the contextual toolbar or something like that if you go over to the top and go to window it'll be right here contextual taskbar if you have this unchecked you won't be able to see this so go to window and go down to contextual taskbar this should be enabled and go ahead and click on that and then you should have these options here if you click on select subject you're going to notice it automatically selects your subject so in this case we have post malone and he's really the only subject in this frame so that would make sense but we don't really want to use this so press command d to deselect so we're going to use the lasso tool this one here the regular lasso tool select everything including the shadows including like clothing or anything like that the reason we need to do that is because when you type in the ai option it will be kind of cut off so make sure you select everything that is part of your subject so once you have your subject selected you're going to click on this button here generative fill and you have other options here but ignore that for now just click on generative fill and what we want to do first is remove him from the image entirely so click on generate so you can see here's a before and then after you can just click on this eye icon to temporarily disable the image and you can cycle through here so you have variations if you have the properties window open if you don't have that go to window go down to properties and make sure that's enabled and then you can kind of cycle through the different variations and make sure this is enabled so you can kind of see the difference here we want to get it as close as to the original as possible zoom out of the image by pressing command minus and if you press c on your keyboard or if you go to the crop tool here on the left side you're gonna have the crop tool again click and hold to bring up this little menu button click on crop tool and at the top here you're gonna have delete cropped pixels make sure that's checked but this is the most important part here is fill right now we want this set to generative expand if yours is on transparent default switch that to generative expand go to either corner click and hold option and shift so that it stays the same proportion. We're gonna extend this out quite a bit to around here. So all this empty area is gonna be filled with whatever reference image we have, which is this kind of mountain hilltop. So we're just gonna click on generate, but you can now see what I mean. And it does a very good job of keeping the original quality as well. So it doesn't look too bad. Again, go back to variations and kind of cycle through whichever option you like the best. This one looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go with that one. And we're gonna save this image, save a copy. I'm gonna name this background main just because I want this to be the main background baseline standard and this just saves this exact image with the new uh, resolution this is our original image and what I like to do is add some guides so I know exactly
exactly where to add the you know the, the other elements to it so if you press command r this will bring up the rulers i'm going to disable this top clip temporarily just click on this eye icon on this ruler on the left side click and drag and this will bring out a line make sure this is around here and then let go if you mess up just go back to the move tool go in between it and then you can kind of move it back here like that so again do the same thing click and drag on the actual ruler and just bring it down to the top piece of this image and then do the same thing to the right side because this is horizontal we're going to drag a horizontal ruler down here like so and then now we can re-enable the generative expand option so now you can see exactly where our original image is which is right here so i want this part of this image to have a palm tree right here okay and then click generative fill and then now we want to type in what we want what elements we want in this image so i'm going to type in palm tree just because it makes sense with what's happening in this scene click generate and then now it will generate an image for you to use but i'm gonna go with that one i'm gonna add a house over here so i'm gonna just type in house click generate okay so now you can see it added a house it did a pretty good job though in this case post malone was walking from the left side to the right side of the screen so we can't add anything in between that it has to be outside of it or else it just won't work so i'm gonna add one around here like around the bottom bar or something but yeah you want to make sure you don't add anything near where your subject is going to be save each image with its background without each element in it so we're going to disable these temporarily we're going to save this image with just the palm tree so go to file save a copy save it to your desktop and i'm going to name this palm tree make sure it's baseline max click ok now we're going to disable the palm tree and we're going to enable the house and then same thing just go to file save a copy and i'm going to name this house same thing, save the old car. We're gonna save the, the image with that. So file, save a copy, and then I'm gonna name this old car. Click uh, save, and then we're gonna go back to baseline and click okay. So there you go, that's all you have to do. So now we're gonna go back into Final Cut Pro, add in all of the images, and I'll show you guys how to create this super cool effect. All right guys, so we're now in Final Cut Pro. So what we wanna do is add or import all of those images. So go to file, import, media, or command I, and I'm gonna add all of the images. You can see them here. So here's our original background main image that we're gonna be using as our reference with nothing in it. We're gonna be adding the house, the old car, and the palm tree. Select all of these by holding command. If you hold command and click, this will select multiple layers or files. So I'm gonna go with these, click import selected. So now they should be here. So now what we're gonna do, go with the background main image, which is this one with nothing in it. Click and drag that right above your media and then what you're going to do is we need to scale the image which is this one or sorry this one we're going to have to scale up and you change the blend mode from normal to difference which is down here if you enable difference it kind of makes the image negative we're going to increase image bigger so that the image turns black when this image turns black we know that this matches perfectly so we can go back to the blend mode and change it to normal so now you can see it matches exactly, which is really cool. So once we have that, we're gonna click and drag that and drag it beneath our main clip layer, which is the actual video. And then we're gonna go over to the effects. We're gonna go to the masks and keying. We're gonna go over to the draw mask, or you can go over to the shape mask. I'm gonna just add a shape mask. I think that's easier personally. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag this mask. You can kind of see what's happening. We're gonna drag this mask right over Post Malone at the very beginning. We're gonna go here, we're gonna make this smaller so that it only affects him, but we're gonna increase the feather quite a bit. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna go over to Shape Mask in the Inspector window here, go to Transforms and go to Position and add a keyframe next to that. And then you're gonna go frame by frame or you can skip a couple frames, which is what I like to do. So kind of something like that. So the only thing is that's changing is the lighting a, a tiny bit. So you're gonna see it's a little bit lighter than the original image, the image we brought into Photoshop. So we're gonna go over to the Color Inspector tab on the main video. We're gonna go over to Exposure and bring the shadows down or up. For it to reset this, this is the original. You can clearly see like the mask, but if you drag the global exposure down, you can actually make it so it blends in a lot nicer. I'm pressing V by the way to enable and disable the clip. So we don't want it too dark either. So I think this is fine. Just to the point where you really can't see that mask so much. Click back on the shape mask and I don't want this to be on the outside of that mask. So we're gonna have to bring this over like that. There you go. Now you can't see it at all. Perfect. So now once you have that, we're gonna select the top clip and the bottom clip. We're gonna press option G to group those together. I'm gonna name this main one okay so now if we zoom out of this image 
<laughs> you can kind of see and kind of get the idea, right? This looks really cool. So this is now the effect here. You can leave it at this and be happy with the effect. You're done at this point. But let's be honest, we want to make this a little bit more unique. So I'm just drag this uh, home image right above. And again, the same thing, the same method to make sure that we have this to where it's aligned perfectly. We're going to select the image, change the blend mode to difference. You're going to see that this bottom portion is our main clip. So if we scale this up all the way, it should turn black right around the middle part, which is our main clip. Then just switch it back to normal. We're just going to mask this portion out. So go over to effects, draw mask or shape mask. I'm going to go to draw mask this time and I'm going to mask out this area, pretty much the house. So we're masking this out. And now if I click off of the mask, you're going to see the some of the lines that we made because it's not perfect. So just go over to feather and feather this outwards or inwards. I like to feather this inwards a little bit so that it kind of blends in with the out the outside areas because it's not moving. If I push play, it kind of comes in and out. But we're going to add the car. So we're just going to go over to difference. And then now we're going to adjust its scale around here and then change this back to normal. So now you should have house and the car and I want it to last the entire time, which is about there. And then I want the car to come in about, about there, which is fine. Go over to effects, go to draw mask and add another mask to our new old car image. There you go. So now we can see everything underneath and then just add a feather to this. I'm going to feather it outwards. You're going to see if you click and drag the slider on the feather all the way to the right, it stops. But if you click and drag, you can actually feather it a lot more. So I'm going to go about here. Perfect. So now if I push play, we have our effect and it kind of looks cool because it looks like this house is tiny compared to the perspective of Post Malone. If you don't want it to come in at all, you can just select like this. That works too. So once we're happy with that, we're going to select everything. Press command A, hold option G to group everything together. And I'm going to name this final three or something or final four or whatever. Now all we got to do is go to the transform options. So click this down arrow and go to crop, go to Ken Burns. The end piece here is where it's going to end. I'm going to hold option and drag this in all the way here, which is about where the main clip was originally. This doesn't matter. Actually, you can put it wherever you want. Click done. Okay. So now if I go back and I push play, we have this super sick and smooth zoom generative fill AI effect. So let me show you what it looks like without the elements. You could do something like this, or if I go back to crop and I just reverse the order, you don't even have to do anything else. You can do it the other way around and it just looks absolutely fantastic. So if you guys enjoyed this video at all, please consider leaving a like. And then from here, you can pretty much add overlay and textures from my scribble film leaders pack which is available now kingtutspro.com you don't have to add this this is completely optional but it just makes it look a lot more interesting in my opinion and they're all drag and drop so you don't even have to install this whatsoever you just import this as a regular clip so this is what it will look like with all of these crazy effects applied ideally you would use this one towards the end just push play so all you got to do is go over to kingtutspro.com link is in the description again here is the main pack that I used for the video. It's the 30 drag and drop scribble film leaders. It's available for Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Filmora. And I have a whole bunch of other packs, including tapestry sweaters. So just click on view all, and then you can kind of cycle through the different editing packs that you guys want to use. I also have free ones here, and you can see a preview of the actual uh, scribble film leaders, and you can get a preview of it with the video here. So this is an instant download. You get it immediately once you purchase and you keep it forever. If you, for whatever reason you lose it, you can just message me and I will send you a direct download link to it. But uh, yeah.